from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 15th, 2016. Israel has named its new ambassador to Turkey. Eitan Nae was appointed by Israel's foreign ministry today to serve as envoy in what is seen as the final step in the reconciliation between Israel and Turkey. Relations between the two countries have been greatly strained since the Mavi Marmara incident of 2010, when a Turkish ship tried to breach Israel's blockade of Gaza. And when IDF commandos boarded the ship to stop it, they were attacked by several armed activists on board. In the clashes that ensued, 10 Turkish citizens were killed and several IDF soldiers were wounded. A reconciliation agreement was signed between Israel and Turkey in June of this year. New Ambassador Nae currently serves as Israel's deputy ambassador in London. He has previously served in Turkey as well as in Azerbaijan. The U.S. State Department has expressed its concern over Israeli efforts to try and legalize outposts in the West Bank. This comes as Israel's high court dismissed a request from the Israeli government to defer the demolition of the West Bank outpost of Amona yesterday, which, as we reported to you, was ruled by the court almost two years ago that it was built on private Palestinian land and must be evacuated and demolished. State Department spokeswoman Elizabeth Trudeau told reporters that the U.S. was, quote, deeply concerned about the advancement of legislation that would allow for the legalization of illegal Israeli outposts located on private Palestinian land, in an apparent reference to Amona. Trudeau added that the legislation would be a dramatic advancement of the settlement enterprise, which she said is already gravely endangering the prospects for a two-state solution. The Amona outpost has been the subject of contention for years and is scheduled to be demolished on December the 25th. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the closing plenary of the Jewish Federations of North America's General Assembly today in Washington. The Prime Minister spoke via satellite and also took questions from the crowd on topics like the Western Wall and pluralism, where Netanyahu said that Israel is committed to a policy that, quote, enables the Kotel to be receptive to Jews from every part of the world. Also at the GA today, a special tribute to late former Prime Minister, Foreign Minister and President Shimon Peres from his son, Chemi. JBS has been at the GA this week. Look for our coverage here soon. The World Jewish Congress marked its 80th anniversary today in Basel, Switzerland. The Swiss city where the first Zionist Congresses were held convened by Theodor Herzl in 1897 and where the WJC was founded in 1936. WJC President Ronald Lauder spoke at the gathering of the Congress's Jewish Diplomatic Corps' first global summit held in Basel and Strasbourg and urged the next generation of Jewish leaders to be like the founding father of modern-day Zionism. Lauder said Herzl is the leader that you should emulate. He said, have a vision, work hard, never stop defending the Jewish people. Lauder also laid out several guiding principles of the WJC, including Jewish unity, never staying silent, that anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiments are one and the same, and the importance of a viable two-state solution. Lauder said, but it must be a two-state solution that protects Israel and the Jewish people and is resolved between the two parties only. Lauder also urged peace, saying, we are uniters and we choose the power to heal over the call to hate. New England Patriots owner and philanthropist Robert Kraft has donated $6 million to build a state-of-the-art sports complex in Jerusalem. Jerusalem Mayor Nir Barkat released a statement today that the Kraft Family Sports Campus will, quote, advance Jerusalem as an international sports hub. The contribution by Kraft is part of the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem and the 20th Maccabiah Games, which will be hosted in the city in July of next year.
And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, November the 15th, at 7 o'clock, a look at the relationship between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Barack Obama from the Limud Conference 2016. At 8 o'clock, Editor-in-Chief of The Atlantic Jeffrey Goldberg and Julia Yaffe of Politico discuss the possible directions of American foreign policy under the next administration in a program of the Jewish Week and American Friends of Tel Aviv University. At 9 tonight, it's parts 1 and 2 of a special L'Chaim post-election roundtable. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, Mark Golub speaks with David Suisa, who is president of Tribe Media and the Los Angeles Jewish Journal. He talks about his perspective on the Trump election. That's on tonight's In the News. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 15th, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.